Hey, everybody. Today, I'm bringing you a great interview with Danny Van Leeuwen on being the CEO of your health. And this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. After three long years of driving, I got tired of my little blue Toyota Prius. It's a small car, not too peppy, and the road noise was pretty loud. Then I started to use the Fair program. I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra with a great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes everything. You get your car, unlimited miles, and that also includes your rideshare insurance, so you don't have to worry about anything. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for just a few trips, and that can cover the cost of your car. When you compare this to Lyft's program, which I did recently in an article, the cost is less and the bonuses are more, and the car selection is impressive. This program is available in California for now, but Fair has other programs all across the country, so check out their website for the prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free, so check it out. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom, DoorDash. Via Amazon Prime, what else? Everybody who's driving in the gig economy, passengers, you're all welcome here. We're all part of the gig economy. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Jay Crater, and the name of the podcast is Rideshare Dojo with Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, my guest today, I'm very happy to bring you Danny Van Leeuwen. Danny is a bit of a expert in the area of health care. I brought Danny on because as drivers, uh, we're independent contractors, and health care is something that kind of can take a, a back seat. So I brought Danny on. I asked him a lot of great questions. Um, and during this interview, he's going to elaborate on the concept of being CEO of your own health. He's going to make some great recommendations for drivers he also gives a testimonial about how important rideshare driving has been for him uh, being a passenger. So uh, it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and it'll definitely get you thinking about something that is important that you are thinking about, and that is your health, uh, not just now, but in the rest of your life. So ladies and gentlemen of Rideshare Dojo Nation, I am proud and happy to bring you the almighty, the all-powerful, Danny Van Leeuwen. Hello, Danny. Hey, how are you? Oh, you sound great. Coming through nice and Good. clear. How are you, man? Well, you know, just got a lot going on. You do. I do. And um but it's going, you know, it's going on. Every day I'm learning I'm learning new stuff and um yeah. things are moving in the right direction. Here we go. I'm ready. Yes. All right. All right, Dojo Nation, I have got a great guest today. I'm very happy to have this guy on. His name is Danny Van Leeuwen. Hi. Let me, uh, let me just do a little introduction here. Danny Van Leeuwen describes himself as a two-legged, cisgender, old white man of privilege, living in a food oasis with multiple sclerosis, committed to health equity, and learning and sharing what works for best health. He's also a speaker, a blogger, a podcaster, a technical expert, user tester, capacity builder, musician, and OPA. What's an OPA, Danny? Grandpa. Grandpa. Got it. Got it. He is a Rosetta Stone of healthcare. And the reason I wanted to bring Danny on is because I thought of three reasons. For, for many of us uh, who are rideshare drivers, we're independent contractors. And you may have let your healthcare insurance slide, and you're just one accident away from financial bankruptcy. So we're going to talk about health because it's something that really needs to be taken seriously. Two, sitting on our ass every single day is not all that healthy. So you really got to uh, start doing things, be proactive about your health, 
because number three, if you don't take care of your health now, as somebody who's in his 60s, what I did back then in my 30s and 40s, I'm now feeling in my 60s, and I'm going to continue to feel in my 70s, 80s, and 90s. So it's never too early to really start taking your health seriously. So Danny, welcome to the dojo. Thank you. Great. So you wrote uh, on your website, I want to be a better CEO of my health and health team. So yes. yeah. So can you share and elaborate on the concept of being CEO of your health? Yes. Um, being CEO is, you know, when you're a CEO, you manage, you lead, you make decisions, you learn, you build a team. So my outlook about health is that I'm the boss of my health. I have a health team made up of a lot of subcontractors, and it is my responsibility to lead, manage, decide, and learn as the CEO. So when you say you got a lot of members on your team, so yeah. as I'm looking at, so I'm 60, right? Mm -hmm. A pretty healthy 60, I would say. Um, I actually, so I'm like a terrible example here. I haven't been to a doctor in probably three years. Okay. Um, I just, I feel like uh, if I eat well, I keep my weight where I want it and I exercise, I, I, I'm, I sh I'm not going in. And I know that's the wrong thing, and I hope you tell me that's not the right approach. So when I think of a team of people, I, I only think of a doctor I might go and see once every few years. So can can you share what yeah. what I'm missing and wh what's this well, team? What's this all, team of people? Yeah. The the team. Well, I'm coming from a different point of view, which is I'm a person. I have a chronic illness. I have multiple sclerosis. And when I think about a team, I think about medical and non-medical clinicians, and I think of lay people. So my team includes my primary care physician and the specialists that I see, mm -hmm. acupuncturist, massage therapist, chiropractor, mm. and my family, my wife, my kids. My friends, uh, I have, uh, you know, various coaches and advisors, and that's all my team. So, that's, so it's my team to maintain my health. All right. So that's great. So you just gave me a big breakthrough there because I, I think of health as just going to the doctor. But now that you, you shared that, I'm thinking of, okay, I do get a massage like every couple of weeks. That's, that's your team. That's definitely yep. to reduce stress. I meditate. Yep. I meditate, yep. you know, daily. So yep. that that helps reduce my stress and that does impact impact my health. And mm -hmm. and and my daughter, like talking to my daughter every day. That's yep. she's she's uh you know, if something terrible happens, she's the one who's gonna get a call and speaking to her also helps helps me to feel right. feel good so each day. All those day. people are your your team. Yeah. And then I, I almost died four years ago with an enlarged prostate. So oh. I definitely had a team then, which mm -hmm. was, you know, the doctor and then the people at the at the hospital and and all of that. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um so what what got you into this into this field? Was there like a life uh, event that pushed you into the medical field or is it something you knew as like my daughter knows from you know, she's known for a while that she wanted to become a become a Actually, doctor. Actually, it was completely a fluke. Hmm. I was, let's see, I had gone to college for two years and dropped out and I traveled a bunch and then I came back and I needed a job and I had a choice of two jobs. One of them was reading water meters and another one was being a psychiatric nurse's aide. And the reading water meters paid more, but I had to cut my hair. Oh. And I didn't want to cut my hair. So I took the psychiatric nurse's aid job. And they encouraged me to go to nursing school. Huh. And I did. Uh huh. Wow. So. <laughs> Something as fluky as that. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, it, 
as we're both older men, isn't it interesting yeah. how little little incidences that we can look back on totally. complete, completely change the trajectory um, Absolutely. Yeah, of our lives? So what, what do you think, um, for rideshare drivers, for those of us in the gig economy, yeah. you know, as an independent contractor, we don't get health insurance. Um, what, what do you... You're you're an expert. What do you, what do you think we should be thinking about and implementing um, with regards to 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 our healthcare? What what are we what are I we what are we missing? Should, yeah. I think you should think about prevention. So prevention means uh, being as healthy as you can be. So I would start with probably the thing that would be the absolute hardest, which is drink plenty of water and build in bathroom breaks. Mm hmm. And exercise and stretch. And I think that you, you, that's a tough, a tough ask for people who drive all the time. So it takes being very mindful about it. Right. Uh, you know, so – but I think those are the, the most important things you could do. Drink plenty of water. Get to the bathroom when you feel that you got to go. And then exercise and stretch. Yeah, yeah I had one uh, – one driver on, and he drove a lot. And his basic rule was that if he if he pulled up to pick somebody up and they were not right on right right at the curb, he would he would you know put his car in park and he would just get out and he would walk around the car, you know till yeah. till, till they came out. Something as and, sim and that's simple a, as that. That's a, that's as simple as that. Movement, movement, and you can Google it, but you know there's um it's just like. Think about being on an air in an airplane, and thinking about what kind of exercise can you get in an airplane. And there there are exercises you can do. So, but I mean, you know, movement and fluids is as basic as you can get, and and maybe the hardest. So, anyway, that's what I'd say. It's a. Uh, I was thinking about this, and it's sort of like uh, climate change, in that you kind of sense something's going on, but not enough that you really are going to take dramatic action, you know. Mm -hmm. And and it's the same when when I was in my thirties and forties. I was like, yeah, I, I know I got to be thinking about when I'm sixty, but uh, it it it's a it is a difficult uh, thing to see into the future, and. I know for me, I didn't get real serious about it until maybe 10 years ago when I started to see my father decline. Right. You know, when you start seeing people who, who you know, were your heroes who were yeah. vitally strong and powerful, and suddenly they're, you know, having a hard time, you know, just walking, and they, uh, but they never really continued exercising and spent a lot of time sitting in chairs watching watching TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I <laughs> and I'm telling you, drivers out there, <laughs> Tojo Nation, that as you get older, the, the the things you took for granted just you can't take them for granted anymore. I mean, I find it's at the age of sixty. I turn sixty, my balance is is off. You know, I find I'm I'm, I'm more inclined to kind of shuffle a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, much more difficult to keep the weight off. You know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to, you know, not have a big, you know, big gut mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, Tolstoy said that a, a man's greatest surprise in life is old age and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. If you live that long, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, what, what change, have any changes occurred in the healthcare industry that might impact rideshare drivers? I think that it's more expensive. It doesn't pay for wellness. It's harder and harder to get care when you don't have insurance. No, nothing good. Nothing good I, here. I, I, I don't really um, – the only positive – well, the healthcare industry in and of itself, I'm quite pessimistic about. Yep. But I would say that the peer support communities – so 
you're a peer support community. Your dojo rideshare um, is a peer community. So that's you know it's a it's a group of people who have something in common, who share and help each other out. Right. And I think that the 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 growing ability for those communities to occur virtually is probably one of the single biggest things I see positive mm-hmm. happening in health. But that's not the healthcare industry. Right. Right. So you're saying the technology that allows us to communicate and yeah. g- group together and create our own tribes. Um, yeah, and just what you're doing here is, you know, talking about uh, with your um, with my, your my audience your community about health, right? Uh, and uh, and I'll bet you could. Um, I bet when you interview people, if you start asking people about their health as a regular thing, um, that's something else. Then you can share. Uh, people's experiences and how they've handled it and right. what they might have do to prevent it. So I feel like you have quite the mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I just you did – have an audience. Yeah, I just did a podcast. Um, it was an on-mic uh, podcast about a report that came out, and it was called um, Dr- uh, Dri- Driving Away Your Health. And it was uh, it was about <laughs> – That's good. Yeah, and it was uh, it was pointing out several uh, places where this industry is hurting the health of drivers. Uh, they were saying that uh, by re- by reducing the pay that drivers are getting paid, that uh, lower income re- resulted in more stress and worse health. Wow! And uh, they were saying that. Um, not know, being out of control with your job. So not knowing what Uber and Lyft were going to do in terms of your pay or in terms of you getting uh, deactivated, yes. um, that that, that, that uh, uh, lack of knowing, that lack of confidence in who you're working for, that affects stress and that also lowers your health. Sitting in, sitting, sitting in your car for 10 hours a day, that is not good for your health. So there was nothing good that they were saying uh, about... Uh, about driving uh, and your health. And I think that a lot of these drivers, because they're not working for a job where their health care is included, they're, they don't have health care. You know, they're yeah. just not, they're not going to go pay the three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars it takes to have uh, health care, you know, each right. month. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's sad. It's a, it's the state of our gig economy. It's a, it's a byproduct it, of it. Yeah, it's not just that. I mean, it's going down for, you know, access. Access is under assault. Access to healthcare is under assault now. So the gig economy definitely, but also other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you do you think there's any uh, any any real chance of of a, like a Bernie Sanders program taking root here? In America, I've I've lived in England and I've lived in Thailand, and I found both of their systems far superior to what I've experienced here. It was so simple. In Thailand, I, it was a pay-as-you-go, and right. and I, I would go in, and it was like I'd see the doctor, I'd get these tests taken, I'd meet with the doctor again, he'd tell me what he thought, he'd prescribe the medication, I would pick it up right there, three hours of my life, and I paid thirty dollars, and I was all good to go. Yeah, you know. And and in England, just you just walked into the doctor, and you know you were taken care of. There was no you know no money transacted there. Um, and here we have our system here. Do do you think something like that can can work here, or or is it just it, is it just the power of the drug companies and and the medical companies is just too powerful? Uh, well. What do you think? Well, motivating change on a societal level is really hard. It's not just, you know, hard on an individual level, it's hard on a societal level. But the way change, drastic change happens is extreme dissatisfaction with the status quo. So there's a lot to be unhappy with. And whether that gets directed towards policy that's more 
you know, middle class and, you know, not the one percent. Right. Um, the the more. So I, I don't know. I'm I'm a terrible predictor of the future. Yeah. Um, so well, I I couldn't say. It's interesting. Yeah, we'll just see. I mean, a lot yeah. of people could vote for Bernie Sanders and 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 push it if he were to become president because that's that's a big part of his campaign. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So. Uh, what was the like the biggest thing? I you know. So you're you're an entrepreneur. You've got a lot of things going. Um, in your life. Um, what was the biggest thing you had to like overcome, you know, where you can look back and say, man, that seemed like the worst thing I could have possibly happened to me. But once I got through it, it's probably the most educational thing uh, that I, that I ever went through. Well, I think my biggest challenge throughout my career has been impatience. I'm a, um, I'm a change agent. I'm a change catalyst. I, I like, I much of my career, you know, I'm a nurse, and but much of my I did 20 years of uh, uh, direct care nursing, and then I discovered organizations and became a uh, performance improvement, quality management, information technology leader. But I think that my biggest challenges were, you know, to shut up and listen and be patient. Uh, the, those are my, you know, I'm just like, I'm sort of a get on with it kind of guy. Right, right. So I think those have been my, that's my biggest, my biggest challenge. I mean, I'm not a person that has regrets. Yeah. You know, I do do what I did. I, you know, I made some mistakes. I took some jobs that I probably shouldn't have, but, you know, I don't, onward. Yeah. 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 You're kind of a revolutionary. Uh, I, uh, I've always felt that way about you. No, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. I take that as a compliment. That is, yes. Coming from one revolutionary to another. Yes, okay. yes, thank yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with, with Dojo Nation before I ask you the last uh, three questions I ask everybody? Well, I just want to say that I make use of, um, your services. Mm-hmm. I am a heavy user of services. Mm-hmm. And I have been delighted. Like, like I would say, so I'm a, a two cane and an electric wheelchair guy. Mm-hmm. I have multiple sclerosis. Mm-hmm. And my chair is a folding 50 pound uh, electric wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And I have probably used services. 50 times, 60 times, you know, I'm a heavy user of services Mm -hmm. and I travel a lot Mm -hmm. and only twice has a driver come up and seen me in my chair and drove off. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, people have been uh, men, women, young, old, the drivers have been fabulous. And I want to thank you for it. Hmm. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't think drivers really appreciate how much um, they actually are are a benefit to people. Huh. I've had um, I've had some uh, blind uh, blind passengers, and or, or with their dogs. You know, mm-hmm. one time I had. I had a husband and wife with each with their big their big golden labs, you know. Um and uh oh, and, you need the lint brush after that. Yeah. And uh and they just they were just, you know, sharing how this has just changed their lives that they could just call a car and go shop go to the go to the mall, you know, and before it was such a big production and a and a pain in the ass and um uh, I know with seniors, it's a lot of seniors tell me the same thing. You know, it's just it's yeah, just well, wonderful. My wife and I have one car, mm-hmm. and um, we're able to do that at home because we can, um, you know, use Lyft or Uber. And when I travel, you know, I always I travel a lot, and I always use the service everywhere I go. It's uniformly great. Yeah, yeah. So That's great to hear. You. All right. Yeah. 
All right, Dojo Nation, take a take a listen to the round of applause there. That's there you go. pretty awesome. Yeah, take a bow. Yeah. All right, great. Fast, the last three. What is your favorite? Okay. Uh, this is what I'm actually really curious about you. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite movie of all time? I would say, I don't know if you all remember Alan Bates, but in 1966, he was in a movie called The King of Hearts. Okay. And it was a movie about Alan Bates who ended up in an insane asylum in France. Oh. And uh, it was it's just a great story. Uh-huh. And so that's my favorite movie, King of Hearts. Oh, okay. All right. I've heard of it, but I don't think yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. I will. I will. Okay. Um, uh, on your phone, uh, you know, on the wallpaper, yeah. what, uh, what pictures do you have? I have my wife. I've been married 44 years and very uh, happily. Mm -hmm. And my grandkids. I have two grandkids, uh, 8 and 11. Oh, eight nice. And 12. Nice. So that's, that's what I have. Yeah. Good memories every time you look at yeah. your phone. Yeah. And then um, last question is when you uh, walk into a room, uh -huh. um, what would you choose as your uh, as your theme song? Oh, that's a tough one. Can I give you two? Yeah. Okay. One of them is Simple Gifts, that, and the other one the, who, is You Can't Always Get What You Want. Who's uh, who, Who's the artist? Simple Gifts was an Aaron Copeland uh, um, tune. Uh, we sang it at our wedding. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then you know the You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Stones. Yeah. Oh, this is one. This is one of my favorite songs too. Yeah, I just love this song. Yeah, it's one of those. Um, you know, some songs you kind of get tired of, but every time I hear this song, I, I yeah. just I love it. It's a great song. Sympathy for the Devil's another one. I could listen to yeah. that song over and over and over, and that uh, guitar solo, and the words. Yeah. But this one. This is this is right there with it. Yeah. Yeah. When he talks about the soda. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. Yeah. All right, Danny. It was great to talk to you. How, how can people uh, learn more about you and your work? Okay. Um, I have a website, yep. www.health-the symbol dash hats, which you put on your head, dot com. Okay. www dot health dash hats dot com. I have a weekly podcast. Thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, so if they want to find the podcast, um, oh anywhere. Okay, and it's called what's it called? Health hats. Health hats. The podcast. Health hats. Okay, so they could just yeah. they could go to uh their their whatever they use their podcast app and yeah. uh and and it's put in health hats. Great. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks for entering the dojo. Mr. Yeah. Danny, it was and great. Thank you. It's delight, delightful. Yeah, it was great. Take care, everybody. All right. I want to say thank you so much to Danny. Danny, that was a great interview. And I think everyone who's listened to that uh, certainly has some things to be thinking about in terms of managing their health and really taking care of our bodies uh, as drivers so that we can uh, live long and healthy lives. Hey, look, if you're considering driving or you want to make more money as a driver in San Francisco, definitely check out my website. I offer a master course uh, to show people how you can make $2,000 a week driving 50 hours in San Francisco. The website is rideshareDojo.com. If you're thinking about starting an online business, then check out my other website, which is Nomad J. That's J-A-Y, Nomad J. You get my free ebook called What's Next? How to do online work you love from anywhere in the world. It shows you how... I'm able to travel to Thailand and all over the world and still work and make a good living. That's Nomad J. I also do a daily one-minute podcast called Nomad Daily, which I share different aspects of my daily life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Crater is available wherever you get your podcast. Look it up on your uh, iPhone podcast app, and you'll see it. And every day it'll just show up, and it's only like a minute, minute and a half long, and uh, people are really digging it. Recently I shared some experiences I had learning how to tell a story in uh, the Story Skills Workshop, which I'm taking. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo. 
I've got an interview with Harry, the rideshare guy, coming up. We're going to be talking about AB5. AB5, everyone's talking about AB5. We're going to have a couple of uh, episodes where we talk about that, just what it's going to mean. Um, I'll do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater. Thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.